Hey team, we're going to learn how to add a full end-to-end -end shopping cart and checkout flow to a Next.js application using Snipcart. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. This video is a preview of my new course, e-commerce product management and storefront with GraphCMS, Snipcart, and Next.js. In the course, not only do I show you how to add a shopping cart and a full checkout flow, I show you other things like using GraphCMS to manage your products, manage categories, and all your different pages, including using Cloudinary to optimize all of your media. On top of that, we get into some of the Next.js features, such as creating dynamic page routes for all of our different products, and providing localization in both GraphCMS and Next.js so that we can provide multiple languages for our potential customers. This course is currently free for launch over on egghead.io, where you can find my course, or you can head to the link below, spacejelly.dev slash ecomcourse, where you can get started now. Now that we have our homepage and we have individual pages for every single one of our products, it's time to actually let people buy these products. To do that, we're going to use Snipcart where we can drop in a shopping cart that's going to provide us an end-to-end -end checkout flow. To do that, we'll add in the Snipcart SDK and map all of our products right inside of the DOM so that Snipcart can actually see all of our products inside of that page. To get started, you'll need a Snipcart account so you can hit get started or if you use the link spacejelly.dev slash Snipcart, you'll be able to get an additional one month free. But either way, once you sign up, the first thing you'll need to do is verify your email address before we can actually move forward. So when we first drop into Snipcart, we're going to notice two things. Particularly, we're going to see this list of nice things that we need to do in order to get started. But we also see at the top here, we have these two tabs, live and test, and they're exactly what they sound like, where live is going to be the production site and test is really going to be basically development mode where we're going to learn how we can actually integrate these things. So the first thing you wanna do is click test to make sure that we're not actually making any changes to the production site. Now, because we are in test mode, we don't need to configure as much stuff as we would when we are in live mode. So we're gonna skip through some of that stuff, but what we're going to move forward to is we're going to get started installing Snipcart to our site. So we're gonna head over to the Snipcart documentation where you can go ahead and click this Snipcart install link where it will take you to the docs, or you can navigate to docs.snipcart.com where you'll be able to find store setup and installation on the side. But as we start scrolling down, we can see what we need to do in order to install this, where we have some pre-connect tags, which will help with the performance. We have our style sheets, which is going to be their styles for their shopping cart. And then we have the script tags, which is going to add the JavaScript that's going to make the shopping cart actually work. Now, before we actually install this on our project, we're going to use an additional tool to supplement our Snipcart installation. Now, as we're using Next.js and React, we're also using client-side routing, where once we click a page, that new page is going to be loaded right inside of the browser as opposed to making a full request to the actual server and getting that response back. Now that's great and that's going to help these pages load snappy, especially when this is statically deployed. But the issue is we're going to miss some of the data inside of the DOM that was replaced outside of the React lifecycle. Particularly, that's exactly how Snipcart works, where it is a very independent way to add a shopping cart to your application. But that said, when we try to add particular data points to our application based off of that information, we're gonna lose that when React reloads the page. So instead, we're going to use a React hook on top of that in order to try to mitigate those issues. That hook is called use Snipcart, which is a simple hook that I created that wraps the Snipcart library so that we can access it between all the pages and not have to worry about that ever-changing state outside of the React lifecycle. Now to get started, we still need to follow the standard installation, which we'll do now, but on top of that, we'll install use Snipcart alongside of it. Now back to adding the installation of Snipcart, we wanna add all these tags globally so that all of our application can access the cart and the Snipcart state. To do that, we need to use a custom document page inside of Next.js, which is going to allow us to modify outside of the body and load these scripts so that they actually do load globally. So under source pages, we're going to add a new file and we're gonna call that underscore document.js. And we're gonna copy the same exact snippet right over from the Next.js documentation and paste it right inside. Next, we can go ahead and grab those pre-connect hints but back inside of my document.js file, the first thing I'm going to do is open up that head tag so I can go ahead and paste in those pre-connect links. Next, we're gonna do the exact same thing with our style sheet and paste that in right under our pre-connect hints. Finally, we need to include the Snipcart script. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that tag and then we're gonna paste that under our next script tag that we see here. 
Now, as we're looking through what we just pasted in, we have this hidden div, which is where Snipcart's going to inject the code, but we also see we have this configuration of data API key, where this is where we need to actually paste in our API key. Now to find our API key, again, make sure we're in test mode so that we're using our test API key, but we can head over to our account section right here, where if we start to scroll down, we're going to see our account section where we can select API keys and we see our public test API key, which we can copy and we can paste right into that field. Now at this point, whenever you add or edit your document file, you want to make sure that you actually restart your server so that it can pick up those new changes. But once we're back inside of our application, we're not going to see anything change by default. But if we reload the page and we search for Snipcart in the filter, we're going to see that we are indeed now loading those scripts. So next, we want to be able to add our products to the shopping cart and see that shopping cart. Now to do that, we can head over to the product section here, where we're going to see the documentation on how we can do that by adding all these attributes to each of our buttons, which is going to serve as our add to cart buttons. Now, as we can see, we have a class, what we're going to add, but then we have a bunch of data attributes, which is going to be where we're going to put our product data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply copy this snippet and inside of my product page at productslug.js, I'm going to scroll down until I find that buy button. And this button component that we're going to be using is actually just going to be a wrapper around the actual button element itself. So what we can do is we can paste in these attributes just like we would if it was a regular button element, where the only thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we fix this class name so that it's going to be recognized by React. Now, additionally, we want to make sure that all these data attributes actually have our data. So we can start to replace these data attributes with the data that we have. Now, if we scroll down, if we remember inside of our query, we have our ID, image, name, price, and our description. So if we scroll up, we can start to replace some of these things, such as our product.id. We can add our price as product.price. We can have our URL, which is going to be a dynamic, which we'll come back to in a second. But we have our description where you don't necessarily need a description. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. You can add it optionally if you want. For our name, it's going to be product.name. And we know we have our image URL by scrolling up to our image tag, where I'm going to grab the product.image.url. I'm going to go ahead and replace that asset URL. Now, the tricky thing is for our URL, we need to use our slug, which we're currently not querying. If we look down at our list, we can see that it's not inside. So what we can do is simply add that slug right inside of that query where we can now scroll back up and we can start to create a dynamic value out of that URL where I'm going to say I want this to be slash products and then I'm going to insert the variable of product dot slug. But now once we refresh the page, we can go ahead and click that add to cart button where we can see our snip cart cart. We can even see that we can interact with this where we can add items, we can simply remove all of the items, and we're going to be able to manage our shopping cart or add items back into it. Now, if we notice the shopping cart is opening full width. Now, personally, I like to open it as a sidebar. So we can do that by configuring it right inside of our snip cart snippet. Back on our installation page, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we're going to see that we have our global configurations. And particularly, we're going to look at data config modal style, where all we need to do is add this attribute to our hidden div, and it's going to only open up on the side. So back inside document.js, I'm going to go to that hidden div, and at the very end, I'm going to go ahead and add that value. Now remember, at this point, make sure you restart your server as we made a change inside of document.js. And if we go ahead and click add a cart again, we can see that it's going to open up to the side and it looks great. But we don't only want to be able to add products from our product page, we also want to be able to add them from the home page. If we navigate over back to our home page, we see that we also have these add to cart buttons. Now inside of our index.js, we have that same button for add a cart like we had before. So I'm going to simply copy that button right from my product page. I'm going to paste that right in to my index.js. Now, similar to our product page, we need to make sure that we actually have all this data. Now, we should have most of this, but we never used the ID on this home page. So we can scroll down until we find our query, where now we see our products, and I'm going to simply add that ID. But now, once I reload the page, I can add my Cosmo fitted hat, and we can see it gets added right to the cart. Now, the last thing we're going to do in this lesson is anytime we add something to the cart, we want to make sure that this value in our header is going to reflect that cart value. 
Now the traditional way to do that with Snipcart is by adding a class name to that container so that Snipcart can handle updating that value, kind of similar to how we added a class name to our add to cart buttons. But the issue is like we were talking about before with client side routing, React will override that and wipe out that value whenever we change pages. So that's where we are going to actually use our use Snipcart hook in order to alleviate that issue. So first we wanna install use Snipcart. So I'm gonna copy this yarn add command and install it as a dependency. And of course you can use NPM if you prefer. But then we see we wanna wrap our entire application with the Snipcart provider. Now before when globally adding our scripts, we use the document.js file, but we wanna instead use the app.js file where this is going to be able to load all of our React and we're going to be able to pass in the context to all of our components. So I'm gonna first copy this import statement and I'm going to paste it right at the top of this file. And then all I need to do is wrap it with the Snipcart provider. So I'm gonna add that Snipcart provider around my component component. And now what this is going to do is make this Snipcart provider context available throughout the application. So we want this available in the header file. So I'm gonna open up header where we can scroll down and we can see that what we ultimately wanna update is this 0.00, .00 value. So to do that, now we wanna use this use Snipcart hook. So I'm gonna first copy that import statement. And like before, I'm gonna paste that in as a dependency at the top. We can now grab that snippet, which we're going to use at the top of this header component, which is where we use our hooks. But now let's log out this cart object so that we can actually see what's inside. Once the page reloads, we can see that once Snipcart actually gets picked up, we can open this up and we can see all the fields that we have available, which includes a lot of the data that we necessarily don't need right now. But what we want to find is the subtotal. So if we scroll down here and we actually click these three dots to grab the value, we can see that it's currently at 70. So we want to replace that inside of our header. So down where we're adding that value, I'm saying I want that to be cart.subtotal. And we can immediately see that it updates to 70 inside of the header. But traditionally in e-commerce, we usually see two decimal places to make sure that we account for the cents inside that value. So I can say that if I do have a subtotal, I wanna use two fixed, and I'm gonna pass in two, which means it's going to have two decimal places. Now importantly, I added this conditional operator here to make sure that it doesn't try to run this function if that value is undefined. But now we can see that it was immediately updated to 70.00. And even if we add a new value, we can see that it's going to update inside of this Snipcart shopping cart. And as soon as we scroll up, we see that it's now 90. The only issue though, is if you try to click that, nothing's going to happen where we wanna be able to see our shopping cart and we don't wanna force people to have to add something to their cart in order to actually see their cart. While we skipped the Snipcart installation for showing the value of the cart, we wanna be able to allow them to open up the cart. And to do that, we're still going to use the Snipcart installation where all we need to do is simply add a class name of Snipcart Checkout on the button we want to activate. So back on that button inside of my header.js, I'm gonna simply add that class name and paste in my Snipcart Checkout. But now if we try to click that cart value, we can see we can open up our cart and we have full access to checkout. So in review, we wanted to make sure that when we add something to the cart, we're going to be able to actually add it to our Snipcart cart. So when I click add to cart, we can see our Snipcart shopping cart. We can also see that it's going to update inside of our header with that dynamic value. So to do that, we signed up and installed Snipcart, where we added the installation to a custom document file and added our class name and data attributes to all of our add to cart buttons. And finally, we installed the use Snipcart hook so that we were able to grab that context to show that subtotal anywhere inside of our application. Snipcart is an awesome tool to be able to easily provide an end-to-end -end flow with all the features you'd expect from an online store. If you wanna learn more about building an online store, make sure you check out my new free at launch course, e-commerce product management and storefront with GraphCMS, Snipcart and Next.js. If you wanna learn more about how Next.js works in terms of creating pages and fetching data, check out my video, create pages and fetch data in Next.js using static and dynamic routes. Or if you wanna learn more about SEO in a React app, which is incredibly important for an online store, check out my video, React SEO with Next.js, where I teach you about dynamic SEO meta tags. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, check out my course, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.